Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. There are a number of different methods you can use to determine the sex of your boa, but probing is by far the worst. Today I'm going to tell you why I think probing your boa is such a bad idea and give you some options for alternatives that are much better. So several people recently asked me about probing, which is why I thought I'd do this video. First, I just wanted to show you the probes in case you are not familiar with this uh, type of instrument. This is actually a probe set that I bought many years ago, you know, when I was just getting into breeding reptiles, you know, because this was really what was recommended by everybody as far as the device to use for sexing. Uh, boa or other reptile and so basically the probes are just these metal rods of different sizes this is actually the biggest one uh, they have this little round tip this is actually one that was uh, supposedly for sexing a large snake like a python and you can see different sizes this is kind of a medium sized one and they come all the way down to this little tiny one which is basically just a metal wire with a little handle which is for sexing newborn colubrids things like that and so the way that it works is that as you probably know male snakes have a, an inverted hemipenes which is basically a paired copulatory organ and the, the hemipenes is inverted like an inside out sock in, in the base of the tail so you just take this little probe you put it into through the cloaca uh, towards the tip of the tail and the male the uh, probe will pass farther because it's going into the inverted hemipenes so they will penetrate something like 10 to 15 scales and the female it only goes a little bit something like you know four or five scales and then the female also feels a little bit wider so if someone knows what they're doing with one of these probes they could just stick it in they could supposedly get a feel even just by the width of the opening uh, right under the cloaca where the probe passes through and when i first got into snake keeping Books only discuss probing. They didn't discuss other methods of sexing. And so I kind of was under the impression that this is the way to go when you're probing your snake. So there are still some species of snake where probing is probably the best way to sex them. But boas are not one of these. And boas have some biological differences that makes them really easy to sex without the probe. There are quite a few drawbacks with probing. So think about the snake. Would you want somebody shoving a stiff metal rod into one of your body orifices and twisting it around? Probably not. So it can't be a very comfortable thing to go through the snake, uh, to go through for the snake, particularly if the probist or the person doing the probing is not very experienced. It's also very difficult to do well if you don't know what you're doing because you're sticking a metal rod into the base of the tail of your snake. It looks kind of invasive. You don't want to damage your snake. So you're going to be a little reluctant to, you know, really push that thing up in there. Um, the other issue is it is very difficult to do with just one person, even if the person is experienced, because someone uh, would really need to hold the snake and restrain it while the other person does the probing. So really it requires two people and it's very difficult with just one person. Many of us are just, you know, lone hobbyists that don't have a second person that can hold the snake for us. It's also really easy to get inaccurate results from probing. And so I've gotten several snakes which were described as female when I bought them. They turn out to be male. And I think that the leading reason why many snakes labeled as female turn out to be male is because of probing errors. So when someone's probing, they're going to be really reluctant to push the probe in because they don't want to do damage to their snake. But unless they push the probe in, it's not going to go all the way into the inverted hemipenes and give an accurate result. So if, they put the, if the snake happens to be male, they put that probe in there but then there's kind of resistance because the snake is struggling to get away. They're not going to push it all the way in and they're going to come to the uh, erroneous conclusion that it's a female. Likewise, maybe they're being a little too vigorous for the probing and they're really pushing and they could actually do damage to the snake. And in fact, you can get a snake that's actually a female that gets missexed as a male because somebody pushes the probe too far in. And so not only is it missexed, but you also have potentially damaged your snake. So for that reason, probing is really not the best way to, pro uh, to determine the sex of a boa. But fortunately for us, the anatomy of a boa makes it really easy to accurately determine their sex without probing. And you can do this with both baby boas as well as sub-adults and adults by two different methods that I'm gonna demonstrate. 
And so the first is called palpation. And this is the method I use to determine the sex of all my baby boas. And it's very easy, very straightforward. You can do it with just one person with minimal training, and it doesn't require any special equipment. It's also non-invasive. Basically, you're just feeling the snake's tail for the presence of the hemipenes. And so the way to do this is to hold the snake in one hand, and then the other hand, you're gonna try to palpate the hemipenes. So to do this, you place your index finger right over the cloaca with your thumb 180 degrees opposite on the back of the boa. And then you just apply gentle pressure. You can see sometimes the snakes are not very relaxed. You want the snake to relax. You just apply very gentle pressure and then just feel your way back. Okay, and you feel two little bumps. Okay, and once you know what it feels like, it's unmistakable. The two little bumps are typically about a quarter to a third of the way back from the cloaca towards the tip of the tail. The two little bumps are the hemipenes of the male. And they almost feel like two little tiny BBs. They're the, kind of this round shape. And once you know what to feel for, it's very easy with your index finger to feel that. So as I mentioned, males or you know, baby boas will often resist. You want to try to have them as relaxed as possible because if the male boa moves his tail and you know gets uh, a little bit uh, uncomfortable, it's going to make it hard to feel the hemipenes, and you may conclude that the boa is a female. So for that reason, I will typically do this when I take an animal out for each session. I will repeat this process three times if I haven't felt the two little bumps. And at that point, I make a uh, conclusion based on that particular uh, session. So this guy is a male, very easy to feel the two little bumps. But if I repeated it three times and I still haven't felt the two little bumps, I would say, well, I think that this, fe this animal is a female. Okay, and then I write whatever the result is on the feeding card on each tub for my baby boas. I don't write it on the front though, I write it on the back because I don't want to be able to see this and bias myself on future attempts. And so then what I'll do is I'll repeat the whole process about a week later, going through the, uh, each animal uh, tub by tub again and doing the palpation. And usually, almost always, I get the same result the second time. And then I, again, I go through, I write it on the card, but then I come back a third time just to be absolutely sure that what I have is the stated sex. Uh, so when you have a female, you don't feel the bump, and so sometimes you, it's a little bit, bit less satisfying because it's really not a positive confirmation. It's really just the absence of the hemipenes tells you it's a female. But you don't want to squeeze too hard. You just want to put gentle pressure. If you squeeze too hard, of course, you could potentially damage your boa. And so I found that uh, after I've gotten some practice on this, I don't even need to feel the two little bumps. I can just tell by the uh, texture and the shape and the feel of the male's tail that is different from the female's. The male's tail is a little fuller, a little rounder. It feels a little softer and squishier because basically you're feeling the inverted hemipenes. And when you feel the two little bumps, it's just the tip of the hemipenes. With a female, there's no hemipenes there. So it's going to be, the tail is going to feel a little thinner. Uh, you're going to feel kind of the bone of the spine of the, in the tail. And you're going to feel kind of less of a squishy feel. And once you do this after, you know, repeated on quite a few uh, boas, it just kind of becomes uh, natural that you can, you know, pick this up. And so that's the technique that I use to sex baby boas. And so I just also wanted to um, comment that some people use a technique that's called um, inverting the hemipenes, okay? And to do this, you basically apply pressure on the tail of the animal, starting at the tip and pushing it back. And then if you have just the right finesse and you do it just right, you actually push out the hemipenes and you can see the two hemipenes. I do not recommend that you do this technique, okay? I've never done it. Um, I know some people can use it safely and it works for them, but the palpation is so much easier and so much uh, less invasive on the boa that there's no reason to do this inverting the hemipenes. 
If you don't know what you're doing and you try to invert the hemipenes and you put too much pressure, you can damage the snake. Also, it's possible that the hemipenes might be inverted, but then they become prolapsed and they can't go back in, in which case is you know, a huge problem for your snake. And if you don't see hemipenes because it's a female, you might you know, put too much pressure. So I do not recommend inverting hemipenes on your boa or other snake for that matter, since the palpation technique works so well with baby boas. Okay, so palpation for hemipenes works really well to sex baby boas. But after a boa reaches, you know, a year or two of age, it becomes harder and harder because the tail muscles become more stronger and the snake will kind of flex and avoid having its hemipenes, uh, you know, sensed when you do the palpation method. So how do you sex a subadult or adult boa? Well, fortunately, the tail of an adult boa is very different between a male and a female. So I thought I'd try to show you this on camera. Of course, it's very difficult to hold two adult boas, so I had to go for some dwarf boas that are you know, a little bit smaller, easier to handle. These are cocker key boas that are about uh, five and a half years old, adult size at about four feet long. And so when we look at the tails of two adult boas, a male and a female, you'll see that they're very different. And it helps if you have an adult male and an adult female of about the same size that you can just compare the tails. You'll see the obvious difference. So when you look at the tail of the male, it's gonna be about 25 or 30% longer than the female of the same size, maybe even longer, you know, as far as the difference. And the shape is also drastically different. The tail of the male is very thick going towards the tip, and then it drastically uh, tapers. But overall, the thickness is much thicker throughout most of the tail. The tail of the female, on the other hand, has this constant taper from the cloaca to the tip. Okay, I'll try to line up the tails. You can see this guy is, uh, I don't want him to get stuck up in there, but looking at the tail of the male versus the tail of the female, it's quite a bit longer and it's quite a bit thicker. So it's pretty easy just to eyeball it and just see, looking at the tail, that it's a male. And once you look at enough boas, it should become very easy to just tell this. And then the other thing about adult boas that makes them really easy to sex is the presence of the spur. And so if you see a little claw sticking out on each side of the cloaca, that's gonna be a male. And the, the claw, the size of the claw, can be anywhere from you know a few millimeters up to maybe half a centimeter or so in a large boa. And it's really obvious. Females, on the other hand, do not have this little claw spur or this little you know claw-like spur. They might have this little tiny bump and this little tiny spur, but it's much, much smaller. And so once you've seen enough males and females, you, you'll know very easily just by looking at the spurs. You can also feel the spurs. You just feel along the cloaca on each side, and if you feel this little claw, that's gonna be a male. So very easy to uh, determine the sex of adult boas. So anyway, this is how I determine sex. I have zero need for probes. I do not recommend you buy a probe set if you're working with boas. Maybe some other snakes it might make sense, but definitely not with boas. I hope this video was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, shoot me a line. Thanks for watching, and enjoy your boas.